That's the bomb shop. That's where we keep the torpedoes. Oh, you're Ow. Right. You're not covered in bruises in the first week. You're not moving fast enough. How big is this thing? It's about the length of two football pitches and about as tall as four double-decker buses. All right, I'm going to need a map. Here, give me a bag. I'll take that. Thanks. No worries. This is the main event. You know what's in these? 50 million pounds worth of nuclear missiles. So it's, it's a really complicated um, story, and what I think what Tom's tried to do is really clever. So Amy um, goes onto the submarine, and um, what she's supposed to be doing is um, bringing the body off so that they can do a proper autopsy, and um, uh, what happens is she ends up doing everything herself, and she's supposed to be down there for three days to, to do all this. But during the course of what happens, um, she uncovers lots of other things down in the submarine and kind of becomes trapped down there because she has no um, way of communicating um, to the land investigation. But that's why she chose Kirsten, um, because they have a history so that the only way that they can um, contact each other is through telegrams. And she asks Kirsten to put um, kind of hidden messages about the land investigation that may impact the, the uh, underwater investigation. It's, I mean, to say she feels claustrophobic is an understatement, and I think she does really well. I mean, she has anxiety and depression as well. Um, and at first, when I read the script, I thought, why, why would you send someone with anxiety and depression onto a submarine and get them to go and, um, you know, do this investigation? But of course, people who are in um, public service work um, nurses, doctors, um, our firemen, policemen, um, they've all experienced trauma, um, human trauma and um, experienced uh, tragedy at some level because that's the job that, and they've experienced um, human um, death, loss, um, grief on enormous scales, these people. So it's not unusual for someone to have anxiety and depression. So once I understood that, I, I kind of, I thought, okay, fine. She, she's, that's who she is. What's brilliant about it is it, it teaches you about kind of what goes on under the water and also it's political enough, but without kind of, without taking it away from being a populist TV show. I think that's what Tom's done really well um, and will do really well, obviously with Line of Duty. I think it touches on relevant and, um, important subjects, but still keeps the entertainment value. And, and on top of all of that, um, the love story of um, a, a woman who um, falls in love with another woman in the midst of all this and, and is struggling with her sexuality um, because it's the first woman that she's ever fallen in love with, um, it, is, it makes it so super complex. I think I was attracted to Vigil um, because of what it was trying to do. It was trying to have a different voice in the, in the content of TV that we have. It's a Boise show, a Boise thriller with a, two females um, at the heart of it, um, which in itself is really interesting and a complex um, storyline about sexuality. You put all of that together and I thought, well, this is the way that we should be going now. It shouldn't be unusual to have all those elements in it. It should just be a TV show and a really, really bloody good one, you know? So, um, yeah, that's, that's what attracted me at first. And the stunts, and then I realized that was hard. <laughs> freeze, freeze, freeze! Full dive with the forward planes, full dive with the after planes, full ahead. New contact, tanker, marking on sonar, zero, three, zero, zero, three, five. Who else is coming in? Just you. Oh. 
Rear Admiral Shaw. This is DCI Amy Silva. She's my best detective. I would even say that to her face. Well, we'll get straight into it, if you don't mind. Obviously, it begins with a murder on a nuclear submarine, um, which opens up the possibility for uh, all sorts of complexities which do emerge. My character, Robertson, is... Uh, yeah, he, he, he basically uh, calls forth who he thinks is his best detective to deal with this. Because the murder happens in Scottish waters, it's a case for Police Scotland. So it lands with us. I think I can safely tell you that there, there is a degree of, um, initially, animosity and sometimes conflict and mis mistrust between the police and the Navy itself. Um, yeah, then other agencies are involved. You don't know who's just guarding their back and who's actually, who's actually speaking the truth at any given time. Intriguing script, really intriguing. I mean, to start with that, that's quite a start. The very top of the series is a fishing boat getting pulled down. So it's, a, it's an intensely dramatic beginning. And then it, gets, then it gets more and more dramatic. I don't know what to say. Yeah, this is, yeah, you'll, you'll watch this, not just from the first episode, you watch this from the first minute and then you're gone. Then you're, then you're in the deep and you're, you're on land with the, what else is happening. And uh, it's quite a journey. And under the waves and, and on land, it's quite a journey. Yeah, so I think it'll be outstanding. So the setup of Vigil is quite complicated, but um, in a nutshell, there's a missing Scottish trawler and a death on HMS Vigil. And because of where the submarine was when the death occurred, they have to bring in the police and they bring in DC Amy Silver, who has to go onto the submarine, investigate the murder, and then come back with her report, except she doesn't come back. Obviously, it being a nuclear submarine, they aren't too happy about people um, coming on board from the outside world, even although we're the police. It's made even more tense because half of it is going to be on the, on the boat itself, Vigil, the nuclear submarine, and half of it on land, as various parties try to work out what is going on, and it escalates. Tom Edge uh, is the writer and he's created this very rich world. We've got the Royal Navy world, we've got the police world, um, and then there is a kind of political world as well. It complicates things, so, so no one has control. You know, she's in their world, but actually she's holding her own investigation, so there are no rules as such. I suppose each character could stand their ground and justify their actions from their point of view. Yeah, who's right and who's wrong. And I think something that I always liked about the scripts was that we're not black and white. We're really exploring the gray areas. You really don't know who, who to trust. It's really quite modern and it's got a real old fashioned Boise thriller in um, the fact that it's set on a submarine and it's a police investigation. And also there's a love story that, that we're uncovering at the same time, but it's, it, it doesn't clash in any way. When I first read the script, I thought it's refreshing, it's new. Um, they're really trying to do something different. What they've done is they've put at the heart of it these two female leads, which I think it's great that we're in, um, you know, 2021, and we're and that's what the language that they've gone for in this new TV show. I think it's brilliant that we've got a really fantastic, high-quality BBC drama set in a world that's really, really unusual, and you rarely ever get to see on television, if ever.
it's important to me to feel like I'm part of a team and we're all, you know, working to the same thing. And all the sub guys had days together where they worked with specialists on how everything worked. And then I was dropped into it and the director, the brilliant James Strong, he said, I, I don't want you to get too friendly with them because your character wouldn't be and that we want them to bond and then you to drop him. James Strong's brilliant, he's very collaborative. James and Matt kicked us off with the spectacle of it and then Isabel took over and managed to marry the spectacle and the emotion. And she just knocked it out of the park. I mean, I think, you know, having a female director was was brilliant actually because she got the emotional side of the journey as well. What really drew me to it the most was was kind of the experience of Amy and Kirsten in it and being two women in a man's world. And I think that for me personally as a female, as a young female director was something that I was drawn to the most thematically is seeing how these two brilliant women make their way and fight their way in a very, very patriarchal system. So what I've really tried to do is just give it life as much as possible. And the locations that James Strong on the first block found all lend themselves really well to movement. We've tried to use the camera to sort of stick with the characters at emotional moments and to follow them to make things feel just a little bit more subjective at times. When I first read it, I was like, oh my God, this sounds amazing. You know, I get to do all these stunts. I forgot that um, how old I was. <laughs> Saran was absolutely phenomenal, just throwing herself into all of the things we asked of her. I got whiplash. I put my back out a couple of times. I was covered in bruises. Every time I went home, my husband was like, what the hell have they done to you now? I mean, it was fun and I watch it and go, oh, she's great. We had Saran on a winch and she did her own stunt on this, which was incredible. So she's high on a crane on a winch being dropped down into the conning tower of the sub. That was fascinating. It looks much better in the show. James even got a stroke of luck when he was out shooting helicopter to helicopter. He went over the loch and unbelievably, not one but two submarines <laughs> appeared in the loch, which is quite incredible. Yeah, it was a very, it was a lucky day. The technology we have now for FX is amazing because when, when we did it, obviously it didn't look like that and now I've seen it, I'm like, oh, that's really good. <laughs> it was really exciting. I've got to take my hat off to production for for steering a course through this, to use a nautical term, because they've had mighty challenges. The specific challenge <laughs> with this role has, of course, been COVID-19. We were one of the first shows to go back. And not only we were the first show to go back, we were going back to a submarine set. I found that very hard because we wanted to make the show that we were making, but yet we had to do it in strict, strict COVID regime, in bubbles and with everyone in full PPE. So thank you to the team. I think the show that we've made doesn't look like a show that was made in COVID times. To get a production of this scale and this quality done in the middle of a pandemic is really an incredible achievement. Yeah, I don't know quite how they've done it, but people are resilient. Amy Silver is complicated, modern, um, quite vulnerable uh, when we meet her. She's concentrating on work and, and that's all she has in her life. We kind of follow her uh, onto the submarine and then Tom Edge did something really clever where as she is submerged underwater, she has time to kind of look at her life. And so during the investigation, there's kind of another investigation going on, which is a look at who she is and, and what she's been missing. She's not your average lead in a show, I think. Amy is vulnerable and complex, I think, are the words that come to mind. When we meet her, she's in a place of loss, grief, guilt, um, trauma from the decision that she made. But how she deals with it, she's on medication, she uh, exercises a lot to um, cope with her um, condition, but when she's down on the submarine, she loses all of that. She doesn't have enough medication, she can't exercise, so that impacts her a great deal as well. So I happen to have had experience with a trauma and had been on medication, so it was quite spooky at times of kind of like remembering my experiences. 
Um, and again, it's, an, it's a really modern theme and I'm glad that we're covering it in the way that we are. And putting it again into a populist show that covers it within entertainment. Kirsten and Longegg at the same time, who's in many ways the opposite of her. She's someone who's very, very self-assured in her personal life and who she is as a human being, but still has a long way to go professionally. Rose Leslie is one of the most glorious human beings I've ever met. She's just a delight to be around. Detective Chief Superintendent Robertson, the policing is important to him. It's a, it's a huge part of his life. And his relationship with his colleagues is uh, one of respect and admiration and, and high professionalism. I see him as somebody who really likes his work. He hasn't gone for early retirement and an easy life in the golf course. He's passionate about it. Sean Evans, I really loved his work anyway, but he's like, <laughs> just like a naughty brother. I mean, I would work with him on every single thing. I think he was just an absolute delight and thank God that we had that bond. So I play DS Porter, and he's the youngest member of the already established team at the police headquarters in Glasgow. He's a bit of a tech head. He works with DS Longacre to help put together the case and investigate leads on land whilst Amy is away on the submarine. I mean, as a director, it's a dream, really, to work with actors at that level and of that calibre. And that's something that will just really excite the audience, having that amount of brilliant actors together. I mean, the sets are just, they blow your mind. And the size of these subs are um, extraordinary. I mean, there's like four floors. The bomb shop and the missile room and the detail that the designers put in. Because also you can't get um, the blueprints of a sub because you're not allowed to get. So they had to just be talked through what, what was where and then come up with their own design, which is phenomenal. The first moment when I walked onto the submarine set, that was quite, quite a big moment because it's definitely the most impressive and biggest set I've ever worked on. And Tom Say, our production designer, did a phenomenal job pulling it all together. The submarine was a challenge for sure and it nearly got the better of us. It was a big, big number to do. From end to end, one of its one part of it's like 70 feet long. It's not boasting, but we've ended up building more than they built on Red October, more than they built on Crimson Tide. We've built, we've built a lot of set. What can I say? It was a big construction build and it took months, but I think it has really paid off. I mean, it's amazing what, he, what he's done. I mean, what an achievement. We had an advisor who helped us with the submarine because we just couldn't, you know, couldn't get, you can't get plans, you can't get a Haynes manual or anything like that, you know, you really can't. And uh, so I sat down with him uh, over long mornings, over coffees and stuff, and just and just asked him to almost just verbally walk me through the submarine and I would sketch stuff out and then we turned those into plans. Then we would show him the plans and he would say, yes, that's how, it, how it's laid out. Um, he, uh, if we got to a sensitive area of the submarine, he just wouldn't tell us. So he was good like that. So that was challenging at first, but then we sort of realised he could just make it up because if we don't know and, and nobody knows what the interior of a submarine really looks like or what MI5 really looks like in its interrogation suites or whatever, then, then if nobody knows, then, then we've kind of got a little bit of freedom there. A submariner for 17 years, he said, walking through our set, that it was, it was like being back on the submarine. It was claustrophobic because, I mean, the beds, there's a great scene where Amy tries to get in her bunk bed and I'm quite tall. The director was just like, can you get up there a little more gracefully? Because <laughs> I just couldn't do it because they're so small. And when you think these guys have to spend months down there away from their families, it, it really taught me about what it actually means to be on a nuclear deterrent sub. It's tricky because there's probably five institutions almost. You've got the, the Royal Navy, you've got the MOD in general, you've got two different police setups, uh, MI5, as, as well as those of domestic areas. So you have to make sure that immediately you know where you are. We had to do a peace camp, which we, originally we were going to film the real peace camp and that didn't work out, so we ended up having to build double what we thought. So we had about 20 caravans and did all that, and, you know, and lots of graffiti. And so that was an interesting one to do. And that also sat for six months in the, in the wilds of Scotland, unattended, uh, while we all had our break. We've also been lucky because we've got fantastic landscape. Filming in Scotland's been great. We filmed a sequence around Loch Lomond. We filmed on the roads that do lead to the actual base, Faslane. 
Um, we also show the naval base. That's a kind of hub of operations. We were filming in a sort of car part factory. That location was chosen because it feels part of that, that military machine that is the real Faz Lane, and it feels like it is part of a much bigger world. Everyone's been working so hard, so it'll be fantastic for everyone's um, work and vision to be realised and get to be seen on screen.